How did I feel at the beginning of the pandemic? Scared. Very scared. My wife was uh, an OR nurse, got sent to the front line of the COVID ICU. We didn't know if she'd have the proper gear to get through the night and protect herself, what she would be facing in terms of her patients. And we were talking about whether she would quarantine away from the family to be able to take care of patients away from us for months on end. I remember staying in my home and weeping and crying for all of the people who were dying, people who had to die by themselves, alone in the hospital. First of all, I was alive. When I say I was alive, I mean I was being strong about the whole panic. I had to be strong for my family members and it meant being as safe as I could. Those of us with the Flagstaff Symphony were anxious and uncertain about the way forward. Uh, We were also disappointed that we would have to cancel the remaining concerts in our season. I decided to bring my classes for little kids to a virtual setting, even though I had pretty big doubts regarding the effectiveness of it. We had just secured a year of major national acts, decided to purchase and install a brand new PA system. So at first it was a little hard to wrap our heads around what this meant for our business and our industry. I was scared worried and fearful of what the next few weeks and months were going to entail. We were already talking about closing our current production before we'd even had opening night. There were so many life things to figure out and so many unknowns, as well as business things to try and weather. Every once in a while, even now, more than a year later, I think about all of the people and all of the families who lost their loved ones. I think about all of the lives that were lost. Well, at the end of the day, I would pick up my guitar. I picked up my mandolin. I uh, relearned the piano and learned songs like uh, Alicia Keys' um, Good Job and stuff like that to help me get through, through the creative arts. Working day in and day out and taking care of the kids, inevitably what the outlet is for us all, but also connects us and helps us cope with the craziness of life as the arts. It changed the way I did almost everything. I am a chronic sufferer, and so I got to learn how to create in a very different way. During the time we were asked to stay home, it gave me more time to be more creative than ever in my Navajo weaving. The weavings I have been doing are all unique in their own way. Overall, weaving has put my mind to ease. After my first class, my outlook turned to joy and resiliency. Not only did people show up for virtual classes, but I watched Zoom boxes fill up with full families ready to join in and create music for something to do together. I am so impressed with most of Flagstaff and the choices many of the small businesses and community, even now, continue to make. With so many creative online and socially distanced performances and events, it's really amazing to see everyone responding so creatively to the challenges of the pandemic and bringing a sense of hope for a better future. And though the way we shared our stories with the community had changed, what a testament it was to how resilient and adaptable theater and art is. We continued looking at the stars, taking bike rides and hikes, sometimes to specific locations to witness poetry, theater, artwork, demonstrations or music, while social distancing our asses off, of course. We streamed and Zoomed alone or in isolated classrooms and labs, once again proving beyond a shadow of a doubt that together the sciences and arts put the us in virus. Congratulations, Flagstaff. When when we asked Nick to put together a video um, using snippets of videos that you all had submitted to us and others in the community and audio recordings, we weren't quite sure what we were going to get, but um, we thought that that was a very appropriate opening uh, to the Viola Awards this year. And um, for this evening, because A, we paid Nick to make this video, we should show it more than once. So, um, So the elephant in the room. Flagstaff Arts Council is now Creative Flagstaff. 
So uh, my name, again, is Jonathan Stone, and I'm the executive director. I have uh, board members here. Stan um, is our treasurer, who else is sneaking in the corner somewhere. We also have um, grant committee members who I'll introduce um, in a little bit. Um, our agenda uh, for this evening is pretty straightforward. We'll hear from the mayor. Um, the grant program is city funded, and um, I know he wants to share some words with you about how important that is to the city. We'll introduce Creative Flagstaff just a little bit more fully, and then um, we will talk about the awards that were given out this year, and then a little bit about uh, two new programs that we want to share with you that we think are important for your work going forward. So, Mayor, do you want to come up and speak? We're using the handheld because we couldn't figure out how to get that one to work. Thank you. Lovely picture of uh, City Manager Clifton. I was actually, uh, <laughs> he doesn't like pictures, so I made him take a picture with me so we could show it around. But first off, that video was amazing. I mean, when we opened it at the Viola Awards, it turned our attention pretty heavily, and uh, I appreciate your hard work on that. I am very excited to be around a room with such breadth and diversity in our arts, our sciences, and culture in our nonprofit community. The work you do makes Flagstaff what it is. It makes this place home. It makes us love our community, and it brings us together. As we see in the video, which will many more articulate than myself <laughs> uh, have said that this, this was a huge hit to all of us. But I have seen how resilient, especially the arts, have been uh, through this process. Not only that, how it had us thrive. That's what we all turned to, I feel like. We picked up old crafts that we used to do. We picked up, for me, my musical instruments that I hadn't played in years. We realized that a big piece of our humanity is in our arts, it's in our sciences, and it's in the creativity that is present in Flagstaff. There, so the city of Flagstaff allocates $305,000 from our BBB tax to the arts to help provide for 40 organization grants to help support the great work and celebration of our humanity and the arts. This is provided through our economic vitality department and uh, <coughs> creates a thriving culture and it creates a creative space which is why the city is so dedicated to supporting these efforts. And the city is also very grateful for the partnership that we have with the now creative Flagstaff to help support these efforts and uh, continue to thrive. So I'm excited to hear about all the great work uh, with these funds and seeing the shows, the exhibitions, the projects accomplished through all of the dedicated work. Thank you. In 2019, Flagstaff Arts Council began the process of updating its strategic plan. Very quickly, the process expanded into a broad community-driven effort to reimagine our work and how we are best serving the cultural sector of our community. Thank you to the more than 100 participants who participated in focus groups and roundtables and the many more that responded to surveys and engaged in one-on-one -on -one conversations. We dug deep on questions about creative economy and cultural equity. We reflect on how a resilient cultural sector is integral to a resilient community. We asked big questions like, how can we strengthen Flagstaff's identity as one of the Southwest's most creative cities? The pandemic strengthened our resolve. It is clear you are passionate about Flagstaff and you aren't afraid of big ideas. Because of your input, we have exciting announcements to make. First, what's in a name? We've had a couple over the past 20 years. Based upon our outreach, it is clear our name does not communicate the breadth of our work or speak to the future we all want for our community. Your feedback calls for an inclusive name that conveys our vision. A flexible name that can stand the test of time. A name at the convergence of art, science, and culture. A name that speaks to the interdisciplinary and boundless creativity of our community. Although we didn't know it at the time, it is a name we foreshadowed after the onset of COVID. And in our new mission statement that was unveiled at the 2020 Viola Awards, we are thrilled to introduce our new name. 
Creative Flagstaff. Creative Flagstaff. Creative Flagstaff. Creative Flagstaff. Creative Flagstaff. Our new name describes a movement. All of us together are the driving force for an art-filled, awe-inspiring city. But we don't just have a new name, we have a new plan, a new visual identity, and a new website. We are focused on telling your stories, celebrating your successes, and making the case for continued and strengthened investment in Flagstaff's cultural sector. Our new plan is centered on three basic ideas. Reduce barriers to participating in the creative sector and the arts. Gather artists, thinkers, makers and leaders and build community around making change. And invest in catalytic initiatives that support creative sector entrepreneurship and nonprofit excellence. Our plan is ambitious and includes significant investments in philanthropy, the creation of a world-class arts and ideas festival, and a consistent focus on training, advocacy, and capacity building for the cultural sector. We invite you to explore our new website and our strategic plan. We are on a redefined path, and it is all thanks to you, our creative community. Together. 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 Together, we will foster a creative city. Thank you. Um, so that video, I think, hopefully did a pretty good job of explaining why we are no longer Flagstaff Arts Council and we are Creative Flagstaff instead. Um, and you may have noticed that we have a new website. Uh, probably if those of you, especially those of you that are in the process of applying for project grants right now, have a chance to navigate that new website. But we've had a, a committee and a bunch of people that have been involved in that process over the last, um, well, the strategic plan for quite some time, but the brand itself, we worked with a great firm to do that um, and to launch that alongside the Vial Awards. If I had ever suggested, I never actually suggested this, it's how it happened, a new brand, a new website, Viola Awards, and a strategic plan to unveil all in one day, um, we won't do it again. So, um, but I don't see any reason why we might need to. I think the work that we've put together because of your input and participation is really gonna be good for our community. So um, the logo, I just briefly wanna explain it to you because you're all gonna to have to put it on your materials now. Uh, the thread represents sort of a limitless and sort of interdisciplinary and intersection of art, science, and culture and everything else that can intersect with the arts. So hence, the logo and the loops and the threads. Before we had three circles that suggested those things were independent and discrete, and this merges them together in ways that we can imagine that all of you can bring together in ways that are sort of truly interesting and truly transformational. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so our new website, um, you'll notice that there are content areas. Um, we're working on developing this but this, a lot of this have, requires the participation of all of you. But there are four themes for those content. Uh, art, science, and ideas, sort of that interdisciplinary creativity. Uh, mountain is a gathering place, sort of acknowledging that where we gather, the people that are here, and the experiences that we share together are all because of a, a sort of a time, uh, communities that have gathered here for time immemorial. And then creative economy and tourism. Our work is central to our community and our economy, and can be even more so. So how can we share those stories, thought leadership, and emphasize the importance of the cultural sector in the economy of our community? And then lastly, uh, creative opportunity. Um, that is our mission statement. Believe it or not, our new mission statement is two words, but both words mean a whole lot creativity rather than arts, because we represent a lot more than um, just the arts in our community. We also want people to understand that the opportunity to participate in arts and creative practice is one that isn't formal or needs to be formal. It certainly can be formal. And then opportunity itself is this idea of intersecting and having this ability to approach all the work that you do in accessible ways. 
So opportunity, creativity. And then our website, with your help, hopefully, uh, will focus on the people of our community, the community itself, uh, programs and initiatives, uh, thought. So if we have something to share that we think we can all learn from, and then investment. Again, that idea of investing in arts and culture and investing in our community. Then um, the second part, of course, is the resources page, which also includes the grants programs. And then we have other site resources as well. There is a job posting section, an opportunity section. So please feel free to fill out that form on the website if you're looking for jobs, if you have a call for artists or call for entries, that, web, that is a resource for you. Alongside our new website, we introduced our strategic plan. And uh, that's about a five to seven year time frame. Delta may shake that up just a little bit. Um, we're getting off to not a great start um, on that. Um, but it was supported by community input as the video suggested. There are three phases to that, and I want to kind of emphasize the second phase. And that is this idea of producing an arts and ideas festival. And so that will be um, kind of central to our work. Not our only work, but this idea of arts and ideas programming and sort of a major collaborative project is one that I think that will be um, transformational uh, for our sector. And then lastly, the third phase really focuses on what next? We've kind of built something new. We're thinking in an interdisciplinary and um, intersection sort of way, collaborative way. What can we do next? And that's when we revisit this idea of facilities in our community as well. So all of this is available on your website. The document itself is quite long. The executive summary is not as long. So a um, glass of wine, when you get home, uh, you can get through it in probably two glasses. Um, I'm, I'm, ki I'm kidding. <laughs> the reason um, that document is as long as it is, because more than half of it is context, is that we wanted to share with you all the inputs that went into what created it. And we also wanted to share with you some of the more foundational work like why the Arts Council was originally formed back in 1999. So some of that research is provided in there. Action plan, I don't think we necessarily need to spend too much time on that, but we're getting to work um, on this plan. A lot of it in our first phase is focused on, um, is focused on kind of the, the infrastructure, helping our organization and helping your organizations be ready for the next phase of our plan. And part of that is our grant making programs. And so uh, grant making and, and our relationship with the city and the BBB Art and Science Fund are central to our work to foster creative opportunity. So uh, before we uh, proceed on, why don't we just uh, give the city a round of applause and thank them uh, for our giving this fund. Okay. Um, we have the general operating support, which is the grants that we are acknowledging tonight. Uh, the capacity and innovation project grants are ones that cycle is presently open. So if you didn't know that and you're like, oh my goodness, there might be a great idea to submit a grant for, there's still time. Um, and then lastly, our special grant program. So occasionally we do um, targeted grant programs. An example of that was the uh, collaborative uh, grants that we did last fall to support recovery uh, from the from COVID and the pandemic. Our grant making goals, which they're available on our website, but I just wanna remind everyone that this is what goes into um, sort of the committee's decision process and our relationship with the city and why these public funds are available for this purpose. Um, that is to enhance the quality of life, um, provide financial support, assist in developing excellence in nonprofit management, and programming and to stimulate public and private support. So these funds hope are leveraged by other funds and volunteers and people that you bring to the table uh, to strengthen investment in our community. And then um, increase opportunities for the community uh, for uh, experiences and support the development of new and emerging nonprofit organizations of which we have several tonight. And if you're a new recipient of the General Operating Support, you can raise your hand. I see one there, Tinkertopia. 
I think there are one or two others that were new. Actually, Pride, you guys are. Uh, so Pride was um, project grant last time. It's now kind of graduated into general operating support. And uh, we look forward to hopefully building these programs uh, in the future. Uh, so the mayor summed this up nicely. Um, although one correction, we're awarding 305,000 tonight, but the city has generously allocated $360,000 for this year's uh, grant programs. And then the grant making committee is on the screen. This is where I would have invited Jamie to speak rather than me. Unfortunately, uh, last minute, um, he was starting to feel sick. And that is um, not good in these days. So um, we wish him well. So uh, for this cycle, we have 31 grant recipients, um, totaling $305,000. And I'm just going to uh, show a slide on the screen with your name, if you just want to cheer a little bit. Uh, uh, when, you, when your names are up on the screen. So level one, these are our smallest little organizations, um, and also I believe our largest um, level in terms of number of organizations that participate. And um, new this year, Museum of Contemporary Art Flagstaff is also joining the general operating support ring. So if you're from level one, cheers. Yeah. And so level one, some of your budgets are as small as $5,000. So it's amazing what you guys can do with $5,000. And 1,000 is a huge percentage of 5,000. So uh, thank you guys for all of the, the work you do on a shoestring budget. So uh, we pulled a couple of photos uh, from the web and from your final reports. Uh, shown here is Interference Series, uh, Northern Arizona Book Festival in Hajoni. Yeah, Hajoni, or which one? <laughs> Number two, all right, the book festival. So um, we're looking forward to getting people sitting in chairs on stages again, uh, hopefully sooner than later, and at the Ideas Festival as well. Level two, uh, so these are our organizations that are about $25,000 to $100,000. No, did I get that right? Okay, all right. Uh, Alice is keeping me, keeping me honest. Um, <laughs> So uh, we awarded about $53,000 for that. And new to this group is Tolson Publishing. Is Tolson Publishing here? Also you? OK. So everything books. Uh, you can go talk to her over there. Um, so Tolson uh, is a really neat new addition uh, to this group in bringing sort of nonprofit publishing to Flagstaff. Um, but it's so level two, if you just want to kind of cheer and thank you so much. See, Jamie also did our paddle raise at Viola Awards, and he has a lot more energy for this kind of thing than I do, so it would have been um, much more impressive and exciting. Um, uh, so level two, we just pulled a few photos from the web. Uh, we have uh, on the right, uh, sorry, left, uh, is Human Nature Dance Theater, and uh, I believe, ah, there, all right. I think you're in one of those photos there. And, uh, Tinkertopia, is that your new space that we have in the, the slide? Yes, so Tinkertopia, uh, Saturday, is opening up in their new space, which is pictured there. And then Tolson Books, there's uh, pictures of, of the books that they have published. So level three, um, these are budgets up to $250,000. And so we have six representing, but we have one new edition this year, Thread It Together. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, I just want to uh, share um, that I do remember, recall the committee having kind of a very excited response to the work that Threaded Together was doing, especially all the work that you were doing to support the community through the pandemic um, and putting people to work in, in that regard. So I uh, thank you for that. Um, so if you're from level three, cheers. Yeah. I think everyone's clapping for everyone. So, okay. All right, Blackstaff Pride uh, is on the left there. I believe that's Jewel, the drag queen, um, who also made a presence at the Viola Awards. Uh, Willow Bend uh, seems to be off in the woods and, and pastures there. And then Northern Arizona Celtic Heritage Society. Um, so congratulations. Uh, the level four, um, 
we awarded 151,000. So these are our largest organizations um, for 250,000. Now understand that some of you guys are $250,000 like on the mark. But we, um, Lowell and, and M&A and others kind of go way up there in scale. We do cap these grants out in terms of the amount of eligibility. Um, but uh, so these are the ones that were awarded uh, for this year for level four. I don't think we have any new additions, but uh, level four. And then uh, just a couple photos here of various um, organizations represented by level four is a Lowell Observatory Theatric House seems to be doing a book reading or a play reading there. And then uh, Flagstaff Symphony Orchestra. Obviously all these are recent photos because everyone's wearing masks. Um, so uh, you might be wondering why are we talking about these in different levels? And one of the reasons is the committee looks at these um, sort of as, as individualized buckets. And so we end up, while we score everyone, or the committee scores everyone, we then look at each level to make sure that um, the organizations are sort of afforded that sort of parity in scale. So one of the things we noticed is that smaller budget organizations tend to score lower. And whether that is in um, the actual application package itself or in maybe sort of total impact, um, whatever that things might be going into that score, what we've done is adjusted. So um, if you on average have a lower score in a, in a, in a level for, compared to say a more sophisticated level uh, in terms of their application, there are minor adjustments that are made to make sure that if so much eligibility was applied in the level, that determines the size of the level. And so that's how we do that. I mentioned the uh, Innovation Capacity Grants. They're now open. Uh, so I know a number of you have already attended the um, workshops. And those are grants up to $20,000. And we're estimating about $48,000 to be given out this year. And um, maybe higher, it all depends. And uh, that application closes on August 31st at 11.30 PM, not a minute later. Uh, so don't chance it. Um, but if you are interested, Please attend that workshop this tomorrow at 5.30 if you have not had a chance to att attend the one that was earlier this month. Okay, You're, I know the Arizona Community Foundation hands out checks, you're gonna drive through and they're gonna give you a check for the window. Um, we're gonna do this electronic style. Um, and so I think we finally settled on a vendor uh, that makes this easy. And so you all should be receiving emails about how that works at the beginning of next week. Um, so as soon as you get your information in, the sooner you get um, funds dispersed. If you wish to prefer a check, uh, you can do that. However, some of you are really bad at checking your mail. <laughs> so, <laughs> virtual and physical mail. So, um, you know, we get a little nervous when the check sits in the PO box or on somebody's desk for a while. Uh, so please, um, if you could choose ACH, we at least know the money has made it uh, to where it needs to go. Okay, uh, less from me. That was supposed to be Jamie doing all this, by the way. Some of you may have heard about this festival project, and I don't know, if Chris, if I want to put you on the spot, just to kind of, you're a theater person. Of course. Thank you for putting me on the spot. Hey, one of the things that is wonderful about Flagstaff is all of you and all the passionate arts organizations here in town um, I got here at the same time as Jonathan did, and uh, Mary from the museum, and Larry who's in here somewhere, and we thought to ourselves, if we all work together, we can raise all boats and make sure that we, we make it so that one plus one equals three, because we are better when we work together. And so what I started off with a very small concept of uh, just collaborative schedules so we could cross promote, Jonathan and creative Flagstaff ran with and said, good idea, we can do better. And that's what he's done. The dates for the festival, get out your pencils, get out your papers, May 19th through 29 of 2023. Yes, it takes that long to put this stuff together. We've already been at it for two years, it'll take a couple more. Mark those dates, 
figure out how you want to get involved, and we can all work together to increase all of the arts in Flagstaff. All right? Thank you for your participation. Okay, so the video I'm gonna show, thank you, Chris, um, and for adding, the, I knew you would add the right amount of energy for this moment. <laughs> so the video we're gonna show is, it's from Art Prize, which is the world's largest art competition in Michigan. And we'll talk a little bit about why we're showing this video, but I want you to see the visuals. And I will say the video itself is a little bit more cheeky than is maybe my taste. Um, so don't listen to the narrator. If you, can, if you can filter out the narrator, just look at the visuals and what you see, and we'll talk about what that means for our community. Our prize is an idea that deserves to be supported. We think so too, Jerry. The divide between fine art and populist schlock continued, but then it happened. It finally happened in GR Jerusalem, in a dying U.S. city, in something of a Midwest Miss America pageant meets Thunderdome of art. It finally happened. Intersections, Anila Kayum Aga's Islamic theme six and a half foot laser cut cube swept the public vote and split the juried votes for the first time ever. Here's Anila <laughs> Skyping in now. Sorry. Critics hailed Intersections as an unabashedly gorgeous and emotional experience, sacred and powerful. It created a sense of wonder, a sanctuary, a space open to all. And she did it for a reason, didn't you, Anila? The ability to have a public space that allows for all genders, all creeds, all uh, backgrounds, races, it makes our world a better place. We feel you. And for a brief moment, all was right with the world. But not really. And Art Prize kept going. And this one won, and that one won, and they won, and this one won one, and that one won one too. And that's Art Prize. And you want to know what else Art Prize really is? Art Prize is a glorified event planner, a place supported by the benevolence of thousands of volunteers, hundreds of venues, incredible sponsors, and a dedicated staff. Art Prize is an art instigator, a social deviant cutting the brake lines of the art world's shiny new Chevy Volt. And they're just waiting for the crash, the collision of ideas ideas, the explosions of beauty. Art Prize has a voice, but it doesn't just speak, it sings, said one artist. We all need that singing in our souls. Art Prize is where we go and we look and we listen and we hope to find that song. Every artist, every critic, every carnival barker, conjurer, dragon maker, drunken grandma and general passerby. We can find it here in Art Prize, now and for years to come. And for that, we are so damn lucky. So, I'm curious, um, just maybe some random thoughts from the room when you watch that video, besides the narrator. Um, what, what do you think? We wanna go. You wanna go? Yeah. All right. We're going. We're, go um, we're going uh, um, in a few weeks, so you're welcome to join us. It's whatever you want it to be, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> 
Uh, so I'll explain what Art Prize is in a, se is in a second, but um, I was just hoping that you guys would get excited by kind of that vibrancy that is depicted in that video. And, and of course there are things that the video doesn't show that we're part of the reason we're going is we want to understand how all the arts are represented and how we can adapt this model uh, for everybody in our community. But there are things that we like about the model that we'll talk about here in a second. But first, arts and ideas. So the festival is tentatively called the Dark Sky Arts and Ideas Festival. So that's a working title. I learned that from Chris. I didn't know what a working title was until the theater people got involved. And, um, but uh, when we, it's sort of so emblematic of the direction of Creative Flagstaff and what we see for our community's future. So in some ways, this slide behind me describes it all. And when we talk about, and this was sort of born from the idea of the Art and Science Fund. We asked this question uh, when we started our strategic planning processes, was what does it mean to be a community that loves arts and science? And do they have to be so mutually exclusive? And what does it mean to be an arts, science, and culture agency on behalf of the city of Flagstaff? So we dug deep and we kind of came away from this thinking, well, it's arts and science, it's arts and social justice, history, architecture, public policy, environment, humanities, on and on. The main point is that arts are integral to how we discover, experience, ex learn, grow um, as, as individuals and as a community. And so when we think of an event, the art prize itself, you saw the video, that's the flavor of what it has we think of an event for Flagstaff and why would we go through all this time and energy to produce something like that? What do we want out of it? And uh, what is sort of our charge to do something like that? So that is where we came up with the Arts and Ideas concept. Now Arts and Ideas is not just for the festival. If you look at our strategic plan, it's central to everything. And so you'll see that in there, we have what we call the Arts and Ideas Framework. And that's essentially that when our organization is involved, we're trying to foster those collaborations and opportunities for organizations to intersect, but also for opportunities to learn and grow as a sector together, but also for opportunities for the community to grow together and with your support, guidance, programming, etc. So that's my brief speech on arts and ideas. So what is this festival? We put together these are not voted on by any committee or something. These are subject to change. This is just Jonathan's editorial based upon everything I've heard. Um, the committee and the, uh, the board and... Um, so anyone can be an artist. So that is an art prize thing. And so we're showing here are some uh, string instrumentalists uh, playing in unconventional ways. I'm sure they're actually very accomplished artists, so this is maybe not the best picture for this principle. Um, but anyone can be an artist. Anywhere can be a venue. And so I think this, this picture actually fits the uh, bill pretty well. Anywhere can be a venue. And then the last two principles we've added. Um, and that is what can Flagstaff share with the world and what can Flagstaff learn from the world? Arts and ideas. So what does that mean? for us in the Dark Sky Arts and Ideas Festival, working title, subject to change. Um, it focuses philanthropy and corporate support. One of the things that we've noticed in the, in the community is that arts philanthropy could be stronger. And what are those activities that we can do in sort of professional ways to introduce funders, and potentially funders from outside of the community, to something that gets them excited about Flagstaff is something to invest in. So festival is relationship builder and introducer to funders. It captures the media. One thing that we learned about Art Prize that has boggled my mind ever since I learned it, they have a zero dollar marketing budget. Yet they get hundreds of thousands of people to go to their community. So there's something there that captures the attention of the region and the world 
uh, that come to Grand Rapids to participate. Now, Grand Rapids is a much larger town. There's Chicago, there's Detroit. There's all of that, we understand that. So that means we're not expecting to do something as large. But can we do something as impactful? The next part is focusing collaborative energy. So if we do this festival together, we focus all of our energy on one thing. Now you're still doing your other things, but you, let's say you do one thing special that year. Maybe that's part of the festival. And you collaborate. We do this together. It will make it more impactful, but also teach us how to do other things the rest of the year. And then lastly, leaving a positive impact on our community um, year after year. That is physical, that is personal growth, that's sector growth, that's community growth. What are those lasting impacts that happen year after year? So there's two tracks to this. Again, subject to change, this is based upon my understanding of everything the committee has talked about to this point. One is the visual and performing arts. And as you understand um, what is Art Prize, it is a crowdsourced art competition. Um, it's open to all types of art, including performance. And the, pri and the prize structure will be tailored for multiple discipline categories. So how do we incentivize uh, those categories? We're talking about prizes of up to $50,000. Um, public vote and jury vote. It's actually really interesting because how varied, from what we understand, at least how Art Price does it, how varied the community response is versus the professional jury response in terms of those prizes. Um, entertainment and celebration is definitely a part of the festival, so those ceremonial aspects, opening and closing and fanfare and all that stuff. And then lastly, if we can raise the money, we want to offer grants to support venues and participation. And we want, especially want to emphasize local and underrepresented groups to make sure they're able to participate and not have the festival be a burden on them. The second side is discovering ideas. We're talking about local and invited presenters. So think of it as kind of like tech talk style. Um, our ideas chair, Kathleen, um, is also the, um, the head of the School of Theater at uh, NAU. And um, so she's kind of got a vision of what she's thinking so far. And but so imagine, um, as far as the book people know how to do, put people in chairs, in front of chairs. There's probably going to be some of that. Um, but also, can we think about more creative opportunities to intersect? And whether that might be residencies um, and sort of fostering sort of year-round art practice that then maybe gets uh, showcased at the festival. Um, and collaboration with artists and thought leaders, and it can go on and on in terms of how uh, we might think about the uh, discovery section of the festival. Now, we put, uh, I don't want to put the Festival of Science on the spot here, uh, but <laughs> we did have a meeting or two where we said, hey, is this cool? And they said, that seems pretty neat. Uh, so in my book, that's potential collaboration, <laughs> right? And, um, and that should be all of our attitudes. Like if somebody says something positive about something, like uh, you can be like Chris Farrell. I think he got my email address before I even got here. It was my personal email address. I don't know how you got that. Your LinkedIn page. Ah. Okay. All right. I guess I did publish it. <laughs> uh, but um, you know, so what are those potentials for collaboration? And we want to kind of just get your juices flowing now uh, for that. So. It's a platform. You as a community make this event special. Um, any organization, artist, business, or thinker can get involved in some way. You might say, how? And we'll say, what do you want to share? What do you want to do? Who do you know? Those kinds of things. It's really wide open. The point is it's a platform. It's broad and interdisciplinary. So can, there's opportunity for everybody in this room. And uh, we want to invite the world into our community to truly appreciate Flagstaff as a unique and special place. And like I said, we want to walk away from each festival year after year with the satisfaction that our community is stronger because of it. While, yes, there will be the week after the festival where we'll all be tired. But once we recover from being tired, we'll be like, that was darn cool. And if it's not, then we're doing the wrong thing, right? 
So the next steps, uh, Chris mentioned uh, May 19 to 29, 2023. He said it's two years away. It's not. <laughs> it's very close. Um, so uh, I'll just remind you of how close 2023 is. And uh, uh, the rationale for that is one week after NAU's graduation and to include Memorial Day. So we're thinking 10 days to start. Could be slightly longer. Art Prize is 19 days. That might feel a little too long. Um, but 10 days, two weekends, uh, beginning one week after graduation. That means we want to help maybe capture some of the NAU people before they entirely run away from Flagstaff. Um, we're sending a delegation to Art Prize in Grand Rapids. I already got my plane tickets in my hotel room. So, and I'm flying United, not Delta. So, um, <laughs> Uh, we're finalizing the event design and then, of course, securing funding. So uh, funding is a big one uh, for this. As you can imagine, if we're giving out prizes in the five, ten figure size frame, that means there's an equally and bigger um, operational structure that goes on to support this. And so um, this means we will be looking beyond Flagstaff uh, to find support for this. And we will be, of course, hoping to inspire stronger generosity within Flagstaff uh, towards arts and culture. The second big thing that uh, we mentioned recently that I wanted to share with you all about, get your gears turning, and I'll be brief, um, starting, well, as soon as we can find a contractor that says yes, um, we're talking to a couple, and hopefully their schedules aren't too complicated. We're thinking November, December, is when we'll start construction um, behind the men's room there and behind the um, lobby gallery. There's a, a maze of underutilized spaces back there. And we're like, how many storage rooms do we need? And if you've ever seen our green room, you know that it needs some work. Uh, so can we do some renovation that makes our facility more flexible uh, for everyone? and uh, that can support this new program that we're calling the Digital Resource and Education Center. So these are the, um, the new uh, space that I described. So moving some walls around makes it just a little bit more flexible for this kind of use. But there's three components to it. Uh, one is workshops, education, and mentorship. The first part there is initially focused on nonprofits. And so we're looking at ways uh, to support everyone in this room's participation in some capacity to, um, to participate in this program. And what we're intending to do is do applied education, such as marketing, philanthropy, communication, documentation, and community engagement. Anything that sort of intersects with the digital realm and digital storytelling. The second is the digital maker space. So this is the physical space where people can actually come and use the equipment, like a green screen, podcasting, et cetera, um, and a lending library. And this is probably the most interesting and unique aspect to this program. We're going to make the equipment that we purchase available for everyone to use. So you'll be able to check that equipment out with training, if you want to use it, uh, because we want you to use it well. Um, you'll be able to check that equipment out and um, deploy it uh, within your own organizations for limited periods of time. Um, Chris, speaking of things that I have borrowed and not returned, your light is right there. <laughs> uh, limited time. <laughs> limited time, not as long as I borrowed Chris's light. Um, it's been up there probably for three months. Um, so, um, but you have many lights. We won't have as many cameras and stuff like that. So, uh, anyway, so I just wanted to share a couple of those things. Uh, I know it can be dry and boring, but I hope the concepts are actually exciting and that there's something that you guys um, as nonprofits in our community can get excited about and, and want to learn more as we kind of go down this journey. So anyways, um, masks kind of dull the mood. I've been smiling, <laughs> I swear. Um, but uh, we, again, I just want to thank all of you for the, um, the incredibly hard work that you guys have had to go through the last year and a half. And like I said, Delta is not, it's not offering positive news at the moment and how we kind of think about our programs going forward. But just know that um, Creative Flagstaff is there. 
my phone is always on. Um, our staff's phones are not as on as often as my phone is, but email always works too. Um, and uh, we're available uh, just to kind of learn about how you guys are navigating um, the next several months and hopefully through to the end of the pandemic when we kind of all emerge, hopefully long before the festival um, and, and you know, kind of be robust and vibrant again. So thank you guys and, and give yourselves a round of applause.